Warning! This video may contain language and violence. Viewer discretion is advised. And now, our feature presentation. Our story begins in the Cloud Domain. The Cloud Domain is an expansive stone castle with a great clock in its right tower. Within the center of its auditorium stands two figures, June Chambers, 18, and Dylan Double D, Dean, 17, who are in the midst of spell practice with Master Goldmantle, the head of the school overseeing the duel. Their classmates watch the ensuing battle with anticipation as June points her wand towards Dylan, casting her spell. Extingum! The spell knocks Dylan backwards, but he quickly catches himself and aims his wand at June. Extingum! As June is cast backwards from Dylan's spell, they will stop and look to Master Goldmantle for directions. Again! Dylan notices that his classmates are quickly losing interest in their contest and determined to win and gain the admiration of his peers, he renews their interest by energetically yelling out his spells. Extingum! June flies back once again and is surprised by Dylan's sudden gusto. She climbs back onto her feet and marches forward towards him, matching his spirit. Extingum! Dylan is slung back by a fierce blow into the wall of the auditorium. A couple of his classmates snicker. Embarrassed, Dylan pushes against the force of the spell and charts back with all of his strength. Extingum! June crashes backwards, but swiftly lifts her wand at Dylan. In your notice! Dylan's strong burst at June is redirected back at himself, and he has once again flown back into the auditorium wall. Master Goldmantle chuckles. Excellent use of Immortus spell, Miss Chambers. Now again, Mr. Dean, you must work faster to outwit your opponent. Yes, Master. Dylan regains his composure, but June doesn't waste any time and raises her wand at him. Extingum! Immunotus! As Dylan is pushed back, he remembers to take Master's advice and retaliates. June falls back hard onto the ground, and Dylan smiles. I've got you now, June. June rolls her eyes as she jumps up and holds her ground. Don't be too cocky, Dylan. It'll only make you more embarrassed when you lose. Augmentum! The spell sends Dylan's one out of his hand and across the auditorium. Dylan was left with his mouth wide open as the other students laughed heartily. After a couple seconds, Dylan finally begins laughing and shrugs, accepting his loss. Touche, Adrian. Well done. June smiles as Master Goldmantle raises her arm in complete victory. Outstanding, Miss Chambers! I'd say we could skip the vote on this one. Master Goldmantle pats Dylan on the shoulder. Despite your loss, you are getting better, young man, and a good sport at that. Dylan and June exit the stage. Who would like to go next? Kai Morris, 19. Volunteers by joining Master Goldmantle on stage. Any takers? A small group of students in the front start to chant, Sarah, Sarah. Sarah Holland, 20, blushes and acquiesces to the request. All right, I'm game. Kai and Sarah stand across from each other, ones erect, as Master Goldmantle raises his arm and motions for them to lean in. Don't think I'm unaware of your previous tiff. I'll allow this fight, but keep it clean. 
Master Goldmantle backs from the huddle and faces the audience. Remember, kids, no forbidden or dangerous spells. This is a scrimmage. Stick to the rules. I don't want any injuries on my watch, and I'll have no excuses. You were all entrusted with the same spell books, so anyone breaking the rules will be severely punished. Now begin! Sarah doesn't miss a beat. She cocks her head playfully and aims her wand at Kai. Oblatosus! Kai is immediately flipped upside down and dangles midair by his ankles. The audience roars with laughter. Whoa! Put me down! Put me down, Sarah! This is a legal play, isn't it? I'm afraid this is a fair spell, Mr. Morris. You're at a disadvantage, but you're not out of it yet. Sarah laughs, and Master Goldmantle tries to hold back his own laughter. Kai racks his brain, trying to think of an idea. Ochmenitum! Sarah's one whips out of her hand and out of sight. Kai is now currently solely focused on getting back to solid ground. Repeller bus! The spell moves Kai downward back to the ground where he's able to right himself. Sherry Ratner, 17, finds Sarah's one behind another student and lifts it up triumphantly. Sarah, heads up! Sherry throws Sarah's wand and Sarah looks over just in time to see her one flying back at her. She catches it before I can smack her in the face. <laughs> Thanks, bud. Master Goldmantle watches the duel with a large smile, showing that he is having a great time. Remember your lessons. Onward! Kai narrows his eyes as they dance around each other, thinking on their next move. Oh, you're so going to regret that. Oh, am I? It's all part of the game, Kai. Consider this part two to last night's fallout. Extinct him! Kai shoots backwards from Sarah's spell, but swiftly raises his own one to counter it. In you notice! Kai's spell reburns Sarah's spell back at her, and she shoots back instead. Again, keep it clean, you two. Master Goldmantle eyes his timer. Extigum! Sarah doubles back again, then grounds herself for her next spell. Immunotus! Extigum! Immunotus! Extigum! Immunotus! Extigum! Sarah and Kai's spells knock each other back and forth harshly across the stage. They get more and more aggressive as Kai's last spell sends Sarah flying into the stage's curtain rod and it breaks from impact. Virundis! Kai's spell stuns Sarah in place leaving her in the air. Enough! Master Goldmantle steps between them. Who do you vote for? Sarah Holland? The audience claps loudly as Sarah's name is uttered. Or Kai Morris. In comparison, the audience erupts in uproarious applause and standing ovation as Kai's name is uttered. Hmm. Quite the turn of events. Marvelous. Congratulations, Mr. Morris. You'll be joining Miss Chambers. Thanks, Master Goldmantle. Miss Bernstein, please come over here. Holly Bernstein, 16, joins Master Goldmantle on the stage. Yes, Master Goldmantle? Use Etherino on Miss Holland to recover her from being stunned. I trust you practiced over the weekend per your assigned homework. <laughs> For once, I did do my homework. Hold still. Ether Rhino! Nothing happens after the spell, and everyone giggles. Holly, what is this Rhino business? It's Eno. Ether Eno. Sorry, uh, I did practice, honest. I just got a bit flustered with an audience. Holly then turns back to Sarah, her wand up and ready. Etherino! The spell takes, and Sarah smiles as she is freed from her stasis. <laughs> Thanks, Sally. Anytime. Are you alright, dear? 
Sarah nods and stands up. Kai turns and semi-begrudgingly holds out his hand to Sarah with a smile. Truce. Sarah ponders for a moment while staring at his hand before giving in. She smiles at Kai as she is pulled up. All right. <laughs> for now, anyway. Master Goldmantle surveys his audience. Now, where are... Who are you looking for, Master? Master Goldmantle frowns and turns to Holly. It would appear that Hudson Terragust and our stout keeper sisters had better things to do than show up for today's lesson. Everyone in the auditorium turns to the now empty seats. Eve Startkeeper, 26, rushes to the front door as she turns to shout. Hurry, girls, we're so late! Lexi Startkeeper, 24, bursts into the living room in a frantic, panicked state. I can't find my magic wand, Eve. I can't leave without it. Victoria Startkeeper, 23, who appears to have been ready for ages, watched the noise and chaos with visible annoyance. Again, Lexi? Where did you see the last bloody thing? I'll help you find it. Eve is frustrated, but begins searching under piles of clothes and items. Victoria, I'm sure I heard it in the kitchen last, when I was making your supper. Oh la dee da Did I rub it in your face when I took out the garbage last night? Eve ignores their argument and heads to the kitchen to continue the search. You better have your spell books already. This is just crazy. Damn! I heard that. Get everything together right now. I'm not playing around here. Master Goldmantle is going to dock us points. I have mine! Lexi suddenly lifts her spellbook up in triumphant glee. In a moment of clarity, Victoria suddenly stops searching for the wand and makes a mad dash for the couch. Wait, it's okay. I remember now. I stuffed it into the couch so I wouldn't lose it. As Victoria attempts to pry her book from inside the couch, Lexi haphazardly leaps onto her hand in order to check a different couch crevice. Oh, Lexi! That's my finger! Watch it! <laughs> Sorry, Vic. Eve, I found my wand and she's got her book. Lexi retrieves her wand from the crevice and quickly hops off the couch. With this news, Eve exits the kitchen, smiling. Oh, thank goodness. We're out of here. Eve hurries out of the front door as Lexi and Victoria follow suit. Instead of getting into a car, they run to a hidden payphone behind a convenience store. Eve picks up the receiver and her hand stops short of the change slot. Wow, I can't believe it, but I forgot the change. <gasps> oh no! I guess none of us have our act together. Victoria reaches into her back pocket and produces 75 cents. You're in luck. I found this in the couch with my book. Oh, Victoria, I could kiss you! Victoria puts the change into the slot and instantly, the three girls disappear. They reappear on the lawn of the Clark Domain's castle. I'm gonna smoke for five minutes and then go in. No, Vicky. There's no time for that. Ah! Eve then pulls her arm. Victoria reluctantly obliges as they speed walk to get to class. I just feel so unprepared. I hate being slow. He might as well be teaching a turtle. And then I'll lose access to the cloud domain and you'll both go on without me. Don't say that, Vic. You're smart. We'll all get it sooner or later. Don't worry. She's right. We're the Stout Keeper Sisters. It's hard work learning all the spells, but we'll keep at it until we master it and pass this school. Just you wait and see. Feeling a renewed sense of strength, the girls enter the auditorium. Sherry is on stage, facing the audience. Arcticius! 
Arcticious casts a spell which allows you to freeze objects or use it against spilled water to create an ice projectile or a giant ice cube. Excellent work, Miss Ratner. Master Goldmantle turns to the start keepers, who are attempting to sneak in unseen. I see the stout keepers finally decided to join us. I'm sure you're aware of the points you've lost due to your lateness. Lexi and Victoria attempt to slurch in their seats to hide from his gaze, but Eve stays standing. We're very sorry, Master Goldmantle. We had a late start and then my sister lost, uh, I mean, we. We had trouble locating some of our materials, but we have everything now. Very well, but this has become quite the habit for you girls. I suggest you try harder to be on time from now on. The upcoming test requires diligent effort and you can't afford the lost points of tardiness if you want to pass. Yes, Master. Master Goldmantle turns back to the students. Who's next? We then cut to a student. The student in question being Hudson Terragust, a troubled student at the Clyde Domain, as he tries to talk to two students that had trouble with him in the past and are currently trying not to engage conversation with him. Hey, any of you know any new spells? Because I'd love to learn from you guys. Not after what you did to me last week, Hudson. You cast a spell on my friend that broke her arm. Why would I give you any of my spells? <laughs> Look, <laughs> It was just an accident. I was having a bad day. That was then, and this is now. I'm a better person. That's what you said last time before you broke my arm, you jerk! Listen, Hudson. I think we'd all appreciate it if you just leave us alone. What did you say to me? You heard what I said. What did you say? Hello? Are you deaf? Leave us alone! Say that again. I dare you. You heard what she said, Hudson. Leave you alone? Yes! Say that one more time. Just one more time. Overhearing the argument between Terragus and the two students, the start keepers intervene to try breaking it up. She said, leave us alone, Hudson. Yeah. So why don't you move along now, sir? Well, look who it is. It's the three dimwitted sisters, desperate to be wizards. Hey! I'm not a dimwit! Lexi, stay back. So, you think we don't have what it takes to be wizards, huh? You little wimbag, you! So, are you gonna kick my ass or what? I'm trying to get to class, but I need these two girls here to teach me some spells. I don't think they will. Yeah. I'm not doing it. Yes, you will. Or I'm gonna have to- ah! Victoria then grabs Terragos by his hair with such force, in hopes of getting him to back away from the students. I'm going to give you until the count of three to let these girls go, or else you're going to be the first student I've killed in this school. Get off me! Victoria would glare at the boy, before she ultimately Let's go, Terragust. Now, apologize to these girls. Oh, fine. Terragust begrudgingly goes to apologize to the two girls. I'm sorry. Go hug a cactus. Now, let's get to class. Master Goldmantle is expecting us. Good day, Hudson. This is not over, stout keepers. Mark my words. Sooner or later, I'm going to be the master of magic, and I'm going to turn all of you into magic dust. Terragust, in defeat, then runs into the auditorium. I hope Master Goldmantle doesn't find out about this. Vic, are you okay? Yeah. The arsehole made me break a nail, though. I'll be fine if I can just leave this school with my dignity still intact. You and me both. Now, let's get back to class. The three girls then head inside the auditorium. As students were milling around and taking their seats, 
June approaches Master Goldmantle behind the auditorium's curtain. Master, I just learned a new spell, and I'd like to demonstrate it for everyone. Great initiative, June. Very well. Everyone take a seat. June has something prepared. Just then, a janitor with a mop and bucket enters from an exit off to the side of the room. He's minding his own business and brings water from the mop. June faces towards him and raises her wand. Timandius! The janitor's bucket flies upwards and levitates. Its swift movement causes the mop's handle to slam into the janitor's poor face. The audience then laughs as the janitor turns around, confused, ready to protest. Dementius is a spell you can use to make a nearby object levitate and hover. You can also move it around and stuff. Excellent work! June points her wand at the bucket and flicks her wrist. The bucket then spins over the janitor's head, drenching him in dirty water. Oh my! Miss Chambers, set the bucket down now! June stops the bucket from spinning, but then cringes as it continues to hang in midair. I, I... I don't know how to set it down, sir! I said enough, Chambers! Put the bucket down! I can't! Master Goldmantle reaches for his own wand, as Kai stands in the crowd, pointing his wand at the bucket. Repeller bus! The bucket slowly lowers back down onto the floor, and Kai smiles at June. This spell got me out of a pickle yesterday, remember? When Sarah had me upside down, I used it to lower myself to the floor. The spell works on people and objects. Indeed it does. Good work on the first part of the spell, June. Although I think you owe Mr. Doonberry, our janitor, an apology. And well done, Kai, for helping June out. You may take a seat now, kids. June and Kai go back to their seats. Anyone else? I want to go next. Good luck, Dee Dee. Show him what you got, Dee Dee! Dylan gets out of his seat and gets up in front of the class to demonstrate his spell. For this spell, I'm going to need a volunteer to come up here, please. I guess I could be the volunteer. Alright then, Holly. Come on up. Holly gets out of her seat and joins Dylan as his volunteer for the spell. Okay, uh, what do I have to do? Put your wand up. Okay! Now point it to me. Holly points her wand at Dylan as he casts a spell to swipe her wand out of her hand. Augmentum! Ah! Augmentum. A disarming spell. Excellent job, Mr. Dean. Miss Bernstein can stay up there and you can go back to your seat. Dylan happily goes back to his seat while leaving Holly up on the stage. How long is this class? If we'd gotten here on time, we would have known. Ugh, I feel like this is taking forever. Actually, it's only been eight minutes. Close to nine, though. Well, thanks a bunch, smart ass. <laughs> Whatever you gotta tell yourself. Hey, are you guys done talking over there? I am. She's not. You're gonna get us in trouble. Shut up. Yeah, pipe down over there. As the argument of the class continues, Holly casts a spell on one of the students' desks. Protonus Absolenius! She then slightly raises the desk and controls it to any direction she wants to. Upward, downward, left, right! Protonus Absolenius. It causes an object to rise and move at any direction of your command. Meanwhile, Terragus who is sitting behind a random student, distracts him by telling him that something is in his shoe. Psst! Hey, you got something in your shoe. Probably a mouse. What? Oh, I hope not. I really don't like mice. The student stupidly looks down to find a mice in his own shoes, while Terragos quietly takes a spellbook and reads it. Thanks for this spellbook, sir. I left mine at home. Hey, get your own book, pal. Goldmantle looks at Terragos, messing with the student, and calls him by his actual name out loud. What's in Terragos? Yes, Master Goldmantle? Would you come up, please? Okay. Terragos then gets out of his seat 
and walks up to Master Goldmantle. Terragust, let's try to get through today without any dangerous things happening. Now, are you ready to be good and show the class what spells you've learned? Yeah, I can do that. It sounds to me like Hudson is putting on his nice boy act today. Terragus gets up on the stage and introduces himself to the class. Hi, everybody. I'm Hudson Terragus, but I'm sure you all know me by now. And now I'm the best student in school. Poser! Asshat! Boo! Jackass! Get off the stage! We all hate you! What the hell is he even doing back here? How long has he been in Eokasire again? Silence! Thank you all for the warm welcome. Now, to prove to you all that I have what it takes to be a wizard, I'm going to do a spell that will blow your minds. But I'm going to need a volunteer. If he picks me, I swear I'm running out of this class and going back home. I wouldn't be surprised if he picked you, Vicky. If I had to be his volunteer, I would use my magic to turn him into a cockroach and step on him. <laughs> Seems fitting. He is a little cockroach. Tergus then picks one of the students that are present. He points his finger and moves it left and right before stopping at... Ned Moore. Very well. Mr. Moore, come up front, please. Oh, uh... Uh, yes, Master. Ned, being completely nervous about being Taragos' volunteer, gets up on the stage with him and cooperates. This is gonna be too easy. Now, watch as I cast a spell on Ned. Ned, I'm sorry for what I'm about to do to you, man. Sting him! Ah! Oh! Mr. Taragos! What are you doing? We are not doing wand duels again today. First you were tardy, and now you are acting up again! So, why not have another one? Ignoring the master's orders, Terragus continues with his game of terror, as he makes Ned get up to try and fight him. Get up, Pipsqueak. It's time that you defended yourself. Terragus, that is enough! You go back to your seat this instant! I'll help you, Ned. I don't think so. Now, for this next spell, I will use it to pose a volunteer against the target. W what are you talking about? Her. The girl I was arguing with outside of class. Enough, Terragus! Just five more minutes, Master. I want to try this so badly. Perukio! Using the spell, he makes Ned listen to him and gives him instructions on what to do. Now, Ned, use Arcticious to freeze her. Ned, no! Don't do it! Arcticious! Ned uses a spell to freeze the students. Tergus justifies it afterwards. Well, someone needs to chill out. I think we'd all appreciate it if you just leave us alone. The students in the class were so outraged in what they saw they would briefly respond to Terragos' action. Is anybody going to stop him? This is unacceptable behavior. I I'm so scared, you guys. All of a sudden, Terragos sees the Master's Spellbook appear on his table. Oh, wow. Well. What's this you got here, Master? Terragos, you have done enough. I do not touch the Master's Spellbook. Are you out of your mind? Terragos takes the spellbook from him and goes to read it. What other spells you got in here? Maybe there's some interesting ones that are not in the student's spellbooks? Terragos, don't! Interesting. Flaritus. A spell that causes a victim to experience extreme pain. I hope he's not going to do what I think he's going to do. I think he is, Sherry. Hey, Ned. What? Sorry, but I'm afraid I won't need you anymore. Flaritus! Terragus cast the spell on Ned, sending blinding bolts of pain throughout his body, severely injuring him as Master Goldmantle would raise his wand, pointing it at the sadistically smiling Terragus, before a bright flash would fill the room. 
Later, Tergos is seen being escorted off the property by authorities, where he is to be transferred to Eokasire, a place where all wizards go for doing awful deeds. No! Please don't take me away! I was just trying to make a point! I didn't mean to hurt anyone! Please! Don't take me back to Eokasire! I hate it there! I'll be good this time, I promise! Back inside, Master Goldmantle heals Ned's runes by using a spell Eternum Regeni, a healing spell. Eternum Regeni. He manages to successfully heal him, causing his wounds to slowly disappear and his mind to return. There, Mr. Moore. You should be healing now. One of you go thaw the other student now. I'll do it, Master. Volcanus. Jin would go out to thaw the students, while Master Goldmantle would then have a conversation with the rest of the students. Thank goodness Terragust is gone. What he did was just completely horrible. I should have known better. Hudson Terragus has always lied about being good. Every time he comes back from suspension, he acts up again. But this time, he's being sent back to Yokosire for an entire year. I'm sorry this happened, Master. We never expected Hudson to take things this far. He's been a troubled young lad for too long. Not everyone in the Cloud Domain lives here like some do. We usually send troublemakers to Yokosire, and they either stay there until they lose access here, or stay there and rot. So, does Hudson live in the real world? Or here? Unfortunately, he lives near the Cloud Domain. His records don't lie. Everyone has a choice. They either give up the real world to live in the dream world, or stay in the real world and deal with problems over there. It looks like Hudson chose the former, and will have one hell of a nightmare to go through here. Students, because of the horrible incident that happened with Hudson Terragust, I am dismissing you all from school today. We will return tomorrow to do more magic, and hopefully have a better day without Mr. Terragust's interference. Good day, everyone, and get some rest as well, Mr. Moore. Thanks, Master. Wanna come to my house, Ned? I can make some tea and we can study magic together. Thanks, June. That would be lovely. After the announcement, we see the start keepers, along with other students, leaving the School of Wizardry. So what's next? What do you mean, Victoria? We've only been here for 50 minutes, and now we're being dismissed early because of this whole Hudson fiasco. Yeah, well, it sucks that we didn't get to do any magic there. Not to worry. This gives us more time before tomorrow, so we can ensure that we know every spell in the book. Although, I do feel sorry for Ned and that other student. Me too. Me three. I wish I would have got back up there in front of the class and grabbed Hudson by the neck. I want to strangle him so bad. Now is not the time, Vic. It's too late. Um, girls? What is it, Lex? Have you seriously forgotten it's my birthday today? Oh, yeah! Your birthday! Sorry about that. Yeah, thanks for reminding us. I'll tell you what. When we get back, I'll make some strawberry cake. Yay! Sounds delicious! Let's go then. I don't want to stay here all day. Plus, I'm getting so hungry myself. Come along, stout keepers. The sisters travel back to the real world by using a nearby payphone and inserting 50 cents. They all arrive back on Second Isle Drive and proceed to walk home together. Well, here we are on Second Isle Drive, our home. Along the way, they run into their neighbor Lorna, who is genuinely nice to the sisters and is always looking out for them. Oh, hi Lorna! How is it going? Hello, Stout Keeper Sisters. Just having coffee and relaxing. How's magic school going for you three? Today was very interesting, Lorna. Yeah, it sure was. You should have been there. Alrighty. 
Well, if you girls need any help, you know where to find me. Great, cheers. Cheers, Lorna. Oh, and today's my birthday, by the way. Is it now? Well, happy birthday. I appreciate it. All right. You take care now. Same to you. The sisters then part ways with Lorna as they continue to walk back home. We then focus on a family living nearby the Stark Keepers, known as the Hearts. Inside their home, a mother and father wake up, going down into the hallway to wake up their two kids, a daughter named Liliana and a son named Noah. The two kids would come out of their rooms afterwards. Good morning, kids. Good morning, Mom. Good morning, Mom. Family meeting in five minutes. Okay. To the bathroom! Away! Noah dramatically rushes to the bathroom, while Liliana follows him from behind, but unfortunately beats her to it as he shuts the door in her face. Wait! I was gonna... <sighs> Liliana heads back into her room to check her calendar. Today is June 6th, and she marks the other days off. Okay, today is June 6th the day my parents go to their business party. I wonder how well that's gonna turn out. Liliana's phone then starts going off, playing a cute ringtone. She pulls out her phone to see who might be calling her, and smiles, seeing that her friend Candace is calling her. Hello? Hi, Liliana. Oh, hi, Candace. How are you? I'm doing fine. I was wondering if I could come over? Uh, sure. I just have to see if my parents are okay with that. <laughs> Sounds good to me. Okay, I'll talk to you again in a bit. Okay, see you then. Bye! Bye bye Liliana smiles at her phone before hanging up. Meanwhile, Mr. and Mrs. Hart call the kids to their living room for the meeting. Liliana, come to the living room. Family meeting. Coming! The kids come to sit down on Karch, smiling as they stare at their parents. So, I'm sure you kids know by now that we are going to a business party in a bit, and your father and I have arranged for someone to come watch you while we're gone. Oh, come on, Mom! Why can't we just be here by ourselves? Well, Lily, you're only 17, and we feel that you're not quite old enough to watch over yourself or Noah. I'm 14. Does that mean I get to watch Lily and make sure she goes to bed and I get to stay up? Well, I don't know, Noah. Are you an adult? Can you pay the bills? Uh, no. Then pipe down and listen to your mother. How come I'm not old enough to watch over the house? Well, sweetie, we love this house and we'd hate for anything to get dirty or for something to get broken. But we're not five-year-olds. Listen, guys. This party is very important. And if all goes well, eventually we'll have them visit us. The point is, it may happen, so we have to be prepared for when it does. Come on, kids. Do this for us. And maybe if you're good, we can go out and have a picnic after. Yay! I love picnics! Okay, I guess that's fine. Send us a babysitter. That's the spirit. So tell us, guys, what do you want to take to the picnic? It can be any food you like. Well, if you say so, can we have... Strawberry cake! Yes, Lexi, strawberry cake just for you. Happy birthday! Inside the Stightkeeper house, Lexi is celebrating her birthday with Eve and Victoria. Eve brings Lexi some strawberry cake, as promised, with a candle lit on top of it. Blow out the candle. Slow down, Eve. She hasn't made a wish yet. You're right, Vic. Let me make a wish. Um, okay. I wish I could go out with the most handsome person I've ever met in my life, Dylan Dean. <sighs> the other two sisters applaud a blushing Lexi for making her wish and blowing out the candle. All right. Really, Lex? You want to go out with Dee Dee? Yeah. What do you see in him? Well, 
I think he's smart, and、uh, he's funny, cute, a really smashing guy. Yeah, well, hope that goes well for you. I remember when someone was crazy in love with me. He was quite the odd bloke. Who? Kai? No, not Kai. This one student named Neville. What was his last name? Spock or something? Yeah, that was it. Neville Spock. I don't think he's in our class, or maybe he was at one point. I know him too well. You and Eve don't, though. He has these thick glasses. He's tall as a Christmas tree, and he walks like he has crutches. <laughs> Please excuse my nice legs. He takes one step at a time, like one big step, like this. <laughs> And you're not going to believe how he uses the loo. Oh God! Don't tell me, please. I beg you. <laughs> Sherry told me this, but he gets on top of the toilet with his tall legs and he squats like a frog, <laughs> like this. Thick! Oh my God! Stop! <laughs> that is weird. Dee Dee's nothing like that guy. I never said he was. But yeah, he liked me so much. I tried to tell him that I wasn't his type, but he just kept flirting with me. I had to make excuse after excuse just to get away from him, and then I ran away from him. And here he comes, Mr. Teddy Longlegs. <laughs> <laughs> That's good, Vic. You could be an actress. Eve comes back in the room only to see Victoria telling Lexi the Neville Spock story. Are you telling Lexi that Neville story? Uh, yeah. I thought so. I can hear you from the kitchen, you know. It's okay, Eve. It's a pretty funny story. Weird, but funny. Come on, girls. We're supposed to be studying magic. Now get your books out. Yes, master. The three sisters get their spell books and wands out, ready to practice some magic. Okay, wands out. I will pick who goes first. Hmm. How about we let the birthday girl go first? Yay! Yes, I agree with Eve. Lexi goes first as she reads her spell book to find a spell that would be easier for her to try out. Ah.、Uh, oh, how about this one, Repenus Dominio? Using the spell Repenus Dominio. She brings a knife to her as it flies towards her cupcake. Holy crap! I summoned a knife from the counter without even getting up. Great job, Lex. Now you, Vic. <sighs> okay, I got one. Corruptis. This spell has the ability to confuse any living being. Hey, Lex. What? Corruptis. Victoria relentlessly casts corruptees on Lexi, causing her to be dim-witted and dumb for a short period of time. Um, Vic, what did you do? I'm making Lexi look stupid on her birthday. <laughs> what else does it look like? You didn't have to cast that spell. There are others you could have tried instead. Relax, Eve. It's not hurting her. Plus, it's funny. <laughs> Victoria then goes on to interact with the confused Lexi, while Eve figures out how to return Lexi out of the spell. Hey, Lexi, how many fingers am I holding up? Ah,、uh, five. <laughs> nope. Try again. How many fingers am I holding up? Oh, I'm going to sleep. Lexi slowly gets out of her fur chair, with a pillow in her hand, and lays down flat on the ground with her head on said pillow. Lex, get off the floor, will you? This is ridiculous. Oh, shut it, will you? Hey, Lexi, give me your hand. Lexi, still acting dumb, lifts up her left leg instead of her right hand. Not your leg, silly. Hand. My name is Neville, and I have the longest legs ever. Want to see my other leg? 
Oh, great. I knew I shouldn't have told her that Neville story. Victoria gets Lexi up from the ground and sits her back down on her chair. Eve comes back with another slice of strawberry cake. Oh, God. Lex, looky here. I brought you some strawberry cake. Cake? Yep, here we go. Say, ah. Uh... Ah. Uh... She then feeds her one slice of the cake. Then, suddenly, Lexi is brought back to reality and figures out exactly what had happened to her. Uh, well, what's going on? Where's my wand? Oh, come on! Things were just starting to get interesting. What kind of spell was that, Eve? Vic just used corruptees on you. Corruptees? Accidentally saying the spell out loud, Lexi's wand starts to light up. Uh-oh. Victoria is then hit with the same spell she cast on Lexi, making her confused and dumb in the process. So that's how Corruptees works. Come on, Lex. Let's leave Vic alone for now and get you cleaned up. Okay, Eve. Eve then escorts Lexi out of the kitchen. But Lexi comes back to get her revenge on Victoria. Oh, and Vic, do me a favor, yeah? Say, you're a duck, me, fish. Um, a drunk, mean, bitch. <laughs> oh, Vicky, come on. <laughs> I can't believe she said that. The two then leave the dining room, while Victoria gets a pitcher of full water and holds it up for a brief second and repeats what she had said again. I'm a drunk, mean bitch! She then splashes the water on herself, causing her to wake up from the spell, and flip out on Lexi for firing back at her with the spell. Huh? Lexi, you bitch! I'm gonna get you for this! Hey, stay back! You're gonna get us all wet! Meanwhile, Mr. and Mrs. Hart are leaving their house. Ready to go, dear? Yes. The two would then start going from door to door in hopes of finding someone to babysit their kids. Starting with a female first, who is a snobby and bratty adult. Hello, ma'am. We are going to a business party, and we were wondering if you'd be available to watch our kids for the next two days? You mean babysitting? No way. Kids these days are so rowdy, rude, nasty, and have no common sense. I don't want to do that. You're going to have to get someone else. Sorry. The woman shuts the door in their faces, and the two would try another person. They go to knock on a man's door, and he would answer with a smile. Hello, sir. We're wondering if you'd be available to babysit our children. No, sorry. I'm all booked for the next few days. Good luck finding someone else, though. They would then move on to the third person. Hello, ma'am. Before you ask, no. I have to teach at a high school down the street this week. Sorry. And a fourth. Hi there, sir. We need someone to- I'm going out of town! You'll have to find somebody else! Oh, these damn kids! Meanwhile, Liliana is sitting outside, watching her parents going from door to door, asking people to babysit them expressing doubt that they will find the perfect person for the job. It looks like nobody wants to watch us. The hearts then come to see Lorna, who is outside and ask if she would be interested in babysitting their kids. Hello, Lorna. Hi, Mr. and Mrs. Hart. How's everything? We're doing just fine. So, listen. We are going to a business party, and we need someone to watch our kids while we're gone. We were wondering if you could babysit them. Well, I don't know. What are they like? We have an older daughter named Liliana, and a younger son named Noah. We are concerned for their safety, and we don't think they can be home by themselves without anything bad happening. I see. Well, I don't think I could do it. But I'm sure the stout keepers could do it. Their house is over there. 
Okay, thanks, Lorna. You're welcome. And hey, good luck, you guys. I'm sure you both have great kids. Thank you so much, Lorna. Have a good day. Bye. Mr. and Mrs. Hart leave Lorna's front porch and approach the Stark Keeper's house. Back inside the house, the sisters hear someone knocking on the front door. Hey, Eve! Someone's at the door! Vic, go see who it is! In response to the knocking door, Victoria goes to answer, only to find that it's Mr. and Mrs. Hart. Hello there. Hello. Are you the stout keepers? Yes, we are. Do you need something? We'd like to offer you an opportunity. An opportunity? Well, what is it? I'm all ears. Assuming that the hearts told Victoria about the babysitting job, Victoria goes to get even Lexi. Hey girls! Come downstairs! We got company! The two sisters run down to the stairs to meet with the hearts. We then cut to the three sisters, sitting with the hearts, discussing about taking the babysitting job. So, what is this babysitting business about? We're supposed to go to a business party tonight and we have two kids at home. We feel they're not safe by themselves. We have an older daughter named Liliana. Ooh, Liliana, what a lovely name. Yes, Liliana. She's 17. And we have a son named Noah. He's 14. Interesting. Um, so what do we get out of this? Well, for starters, we'll pay you girls $100. Okay, I'm sold. Wait, we're supposed to be studying magic, not babysitting children. And also, it's still my birthday, and I say we go shopping. Except, we don't have any money. Alright, as long as these kids don't act like babies, I guess I'm in too. By the way, will it be $100 for each of us? That is correct. Come on, Lex. It will be a piece of cake. Besides, imagine all the things you could buy with that kind of money. Oh, you're right, Eve. Count me in. That's fantastic. What are your names? I'm Eve Stoutkeeper. I'm Lexi Stoutkeeper. And I'm Victoria Stoutkeeper. Such intriguing names. You're all hired. Hooray! <laughs> Yippee! All right! Suddenly, Mr. Hart's cell phone rings, and he picks it up. Hold on, the company's calling. Hello? Yes? Uh-huh. Uh-huh. The party's been postponed. Till tomorrow. Oh, I, I see. Okay, then. All right, thanks. Mr. Hart hangs up with a troubled look on his face, as his wife asks what happened. What's wrong, honey? The party's been postponed until tomorrow. They forgot to get everything set up, and one of the representatives accidentally fell off the stage and broke his arm. Oh no, what do we do? We're already dressed for the party. Guess we can get a hotel room until then. Excuse me, if you don't mind me asking, where do you work? We work at a college. I'm a teacher. And I'm one of the principals. That's nice. But we didn't want the students to know we're married because that would be weird, so I go by Miss Nelson. I see. So when do we start? Today. Today. We then cut back to the Hart's house, as Mr. and Mrs. Hart return after successfully getting the start keepers involved with the babysitting job. Hey kids! Hi mom! Hi dad! What's up? We want you to come and meet your new babysitters. Well, who are they? Kids, meet the stout keepers. After a brief and warm welcome from Mr. and Mrs. Hart, the start keepers come from behind to introduce themselves as they enter the house. Hi, kids. My name is Eve Stoutkeeper, and these are my sisters, Lexi and Victoria. 
Free babysitters? Isn't that a bit much? Well, they were the only ones we could find. That's great. So, you guys must be Liliana and Noah, right? Yes, we are. Actually, I prefer to go by Booger. <sighs> you look like a booger. Ow, Lexi! My foot! Sorry. So, they will be watching you for the next two days. Two days? What about the party? They postponed it until tomorrow, and we decided to get a hotel room until then. We're leaving now so we can get up bright and early for the party, but promise us you'll behave and listen to Eve and her sisters. Okay, we promise. Don't make promises you can't keep. Noah, behave, okay? We're counting on you to be nice. Yes, Dad. We'd better go now. Eve, make sure the kids are in bed by 9 and are at school tomorrow by 8 in the morning. We still have to go to school? Yes. Well, that sucks. No problem, Mr. and Mrs. Hart. You can count on us. Yeah, we'll be the best babysitters you've ever hired. Yeah, and as long as your kids don't piss me off, things should go just fine. Vic! Stop it. Don't say that in front of the kids. What? It's true. We now see Mr. and Mrs. Hart finally leaving the house while saying goodbye to the kids and the start keepers. Goodbye, kids. Good luck, girls. We'll call you when we get settled. Bye, Mom and Dad. Bye, Mr. and Mrs. Hart. Have fun at the party. Bye. We love you. Meanwhile, in this dark place called Eokasire, we see Terragust behind bars in a jailhouse as he finds a way to escape. Being behind bars sure does suck. I gotta find a way out of this hellhole. Then he finds that he can use dark magic to free himself as he places his hand on the wall and melts through. I think I just found a way. Terragus uses black magic to melt the bars of his cell and escapes quickly. Those kids at school don't know who they're messing with. These hands are just what I need to light this place up. <laughs> he then flies out of the jailhouse and heads straight for the school of wizardry. Master... I've got more magic tricks I want to show you. Inside the School of Wizardry, we see Master Goldmantle reading a spell book. As all of the sudden, Terragus crashes into the place, taking him by surprise and confronting him. Hello, Master. Hudson Terragus! What are you doing here? You should be behind bars! School is closed! But Master, I haven't finished all my assignments yet. I still have some things I'd like to show you. Don't be sure, lad. There is no type of magic you could possibly do without the book. You're right, Master. Which is why I'm gonna take yours. Don't you dare come near my desk, insolent child! Or I'll personally see to it your turn to dust! Oh, don't worry, Master. I don't have to come any closer. Watch. With the power of his mind, Terragoth takes the Master Spellbook from Master Goldmantle. What? How did you do that? I have the power of the Force in my mind, and the fire in my soul. I don't normally use them, but when I get mad, as when my special powers manifest themselves. Crazy how that works, right? <laughs> but don't worry too much. I'm not mad. I'm trying to be reasonable. That's the master spellbook you've got there! Give it back. Um, let me think. No! Give me the book, Terragust! The master charges at Terragust, but he attempts to use one of the spells to burn him back. Veritas! Terragust gravely injures the master and tries to finish him off. Slowly. <laughs> What else do you got for me? 
Ooh, interesting. Lord Sin. Sorry, Lenis Venomous. The Killing Curse. Don't do it. All I wanted was to be the best student. I wanted to be the coolest student. I wanted to be popular. I wanted to know all the spells. And now, I have a way to do it. I have a way to change people's attitudes about me. So, I thank you for that, Master. I'm not gonna kill you. That would be too easy. I'm just gonna leave you until you die. Goodbye, Master. He then leaves the school, leaving the Master alone. You know what? The Cloud Domain is not safe for me anymore. Police are gonna start looking for me. I must escape from this place. He then flees from the Cloud Domain and heads straight for the real world. In the next morning, the sisters go from room to room to wake up the kids for school. All right, kids, get up. Time for school. The kids then wake up groggily and come out of their rooms. We then cut to the sisters already escorting the kids to the bus stop. Ugh, it's so early. But why? I don't want to go. Stop whining, Noah. It's because mom and dad said so. That's right. And we were told to escort you little brats to the bus stop too. Big stop! Besides, we have classes too. Really? <laughs> you guys look a bit too old to be going to school. We're in uni. We're, uh, studying laboratory stuff. Oh. Laboratory at uni, Lex. Get off my back, Eve. That's all I can think of. We mustn't tell the kids that we're wizards. What time should we come pick you up? We get off at three o'clock. Perfect. We'll see you then. Have fun. Thank you. Bye. Bye. Let me know if your brother gets his lunch money stolen by those bullies. I'll come over there and beat them up myself. The kids head off to school while the cert keepers go to the payphone at the convenience store. Don't bother. I have 75 cents this time. Great. I can't wait to go back to do more magic. I'm more concerned about Ned. Hope he's okay. Oh, yeah, you're right. We should go see how he's holding up. Hold on, girls. The sisters transport themselves back to the cloud domain with a flash of white. The sisters get to school only to find fellow students waiting for them to show up. Something urgent must have happened. Stoutkeepers! I'm so glad you girls are here! It's Master Goldmantle. He's... dying. Shocked by the news, they go to see how the Master is holding up, hoping that he will be okay. Oh, Stoutkeepers! Just the girls I wanted to see. Come. I need you to hear this. Yes, Master Goldmantle. Anything you need will help you. It's Theragust. He's escaped from Eoke's sire and come back for me. He's stolen the Master's spellbook and fled from the Cloud Domain. That spellbook has spells even I couldn't teach you. Spells that you weren't ever supposed to know. Yet. Taragust. That fiend. Tell us what we should do, Master. Go find him, girls, and get the Master's spellbook back. Don't return until it's safe from Taragust's claws. But what about you, Master? Don't worry about me. I'll be fine. Trust me. Just get the book back, please. You three girls are the only ones I can count on. If you want to start somewhere, look for him in the real world. I wish you the best of luck. Dismissed. And on that note, the sisters walk from the master, believing that he will be okay after all. 
The other students also wished them luck on their way out of school. I never thought I'd say this, but good luck, girls. Make them pay. Give them hell, stout keepers. Be careful, girls. He's a bad man. Make him disappear forever. Make him pay for what he's done. We'll stay here and tend to Master Gold Mantle. Thanks, guys. We may not be the best wizards in this school, but we will use what Master Gold Mantle taught us to make sure everything turns out right. Come along, Stout Keepers. To be continued in part two, of course. Some say they believe in magic, but I beg to differ. Some don't even see the rainbow and the flowers start to wither. I can change the world. 